uh, 1967, Otis Redding began producing uh, other artists. Uh, his first production was a song called Sweet Soul Music by Arthur Conley, which was his first million seller. Uh, since Otis began producing other artists, uh, we decided to open the first recording studio uh, here in Macon. Um, Otis, my brother Phil, and myself bought this building for our studio. Uh, after purchasing the building and, and uh, getting ready to open, we brought in engineers from New York uh, to uh, advise us on the construction of the studio. Uh, Tom Dowd from Atlantic Records, who is a very famous producer, came down and he took one look at the building and, and advised us that the ceilings were not high enough for a recording studio with the current uh, recording equipment. Uh, even though the uh, ceilings in this building are over 20 feet high, uh, it was still not considered uh, uh, high enough. It was not enough big, uh, big enough room. Uh, so we went three doors down and bought another building because it was cheaper to buy another building in that era than it was to gut this building and, and uh, start uh, uh, construction that way. Uh, after the other building was uh, bought and the studio uh, was built there, this building was used as a rehearsal hall for years. Uh, we had the Almond Brothers Band, we had the Marshall Tucker Band, we had Wet Willie, we had uh, Boz Skaggs, we had... Uh, just numerous bands use this facility as a, as a rehearsal building. Uh, we'll continue the thing in front of the old uh, Capricorn Studios now. And this is the uh, famous rec uh, Capricorn Recording Studio. Uh, this room was uh, definitely the state of the art recording studio. My brother updated this studio weekly. Uh, it has been uh, gutted, rebuilt, gutted, rebuilt, gutted, rebuilt numerous times. A total of about three and a half million dollars was spent on the inside just in the equipment and the renovations alone. Everybody from the Almond Brothers Band to Leonard Skinner to Marsha Tucker, Bonnie Bramlett, Boz Skaggs, uh, uh, James Brown, Willie Nelson, uh, Peter Gabriel, uh, so many famous people, more famous people have walked through these two doors than any other doors in the city of Macon other than maybe the Macon City Auditorium. Uh, this facility uh, is closed now, which is a shame because uh, the last two owners uh, thought that they could actually buy their way into the music business. It doesn't work that way. Without the hit records, studios close the doors. Uh, it just doesn't happen. Uh, this is, is still one of the greatest sounding rooms in the world. It was built in, in the uh, 60s when the dead sound was popular. This room is so dead that when you clap your hands inside, the sound just completely disappears. It just, it just fades right away. The acoustics in it, the main support beams inside of the uh, building itself have been uh, uh, sheared or, or sawed where no vibrations from the street noise could actually get inside. This studio uh, has, has had some of the finest engineers. We had a staff of engineers uh, that stayed here and it ran 24 hours a day. Uh, always with the understanding that no matter who was recording, if the Almond Brothers band decided they wanted to come in and record, the other band had to stop their session in order for the Almond Brothers to come in and, and do their work because the building was set up uh, specifically for their productions and for the, uh, all of the productions on Capricorn Records. Uh, this, we kept the creative environment down here on Broadway, whereas the business offices were all up on Cotton Avenue. Uh, that way we felt like that the uh, business part wouldn't interfere with the creativity. And uh, actually uh, things like pinball machines and ping pong tables and things like that were set up inside for a little recreational break on the side. Uh, there were rehearsal rooms right here inside where you could rent one particular room for rehearsals. Uh, again, a very dead sounding room, uh, soundproof all the way. Uh, Johnny Sandlin was one of our finest engineers and he was one that personally supervised the uh, renovations of uh, the studio. Uh, it had everything from the quad sound at one time to uh, 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 Westlake equipment, which was state of the art at the time. Uh, when this facility was closed, the new owners did not know uh, what they really had. In the, uh, they had paid only a few hundred thousand dollars for this building, 
and inside, if they had kept the original equipment, they would have found out that uh, the equipment alone was worth about a million and a half uh, dollars. Uh, when I was giving a tour to uh, a, a potential investor one time, uh, we were had an engineer with us, and, and as we were going across the room, there was a piece of equipment laying in the floor there, disconnected, and uh, the engineer made the comment to me, to tell you how much they don't know about it, that's $65,000 laying there as if, as if it's a piece of trash laying on the floor. He said the reason why it's laid on the floor is because they don't have the ability to even use that equipment. But uh, as I said, this studio has been closed. We have had a petition uh, with the city for them not to ever tear this building down. We don't want to make the same mistake that they made with Stax Records in Memphis and tear it down. And now they're spending something like 24 to $30 million trying to rebuild the old Stax studio. Uh, in Stax Museum. And uh, so we're, we're hoping that uh, this will once again be a creative environment again. Uh, hopefully that uh, Mercer University, who is the new owners, will uh, encourage my brother to come back here and open a recording studio once again. Uh, Macon, Georgia has always been known for production of music, more so than almost any other thing. And it's a shame that we do not have uh, a studio such as, as what this one was in its heyday years.